Okay guys, today is Monday, November the 11th. My competition was last Saturday, November the 9th. It is all technically over. And as I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, I placed. Now take it easy guys, I could already hear some of you getting your, you know, your dislike fingers ready, you're, you're typing out your hater comments like, Igor, what the hell, the competition already had. I need a little bit more time. The competition weekend ended like literally less than 24 hours ago. I've got a lot of footage to go through, edit, put it all together, and it's gonna take me a little bit of time, especially because technically it is the end of my 2019 competition season, so I really wanna take my time and do this video right. But in the meantime, there's still one more thing we need to talk about, what some people in the fitness or bodybuilding community like to refer to as uh, the peak week, and this is very important because if you actually look at my weight loss on a week by week basis, all the way until the end of my competition prep, it follows a very kind of standardized, uh, standardized pattern. But then the crazy thing is this right here was technically the highest week, uh, single week of weight loss I had throughout the entire competition prep. And this is the peak week. And this is what I want to talk about today. A really good way to actually show you guys what I'm talking about is this photo. I actually threw this up the day before um, I show this is technically me one day out. The leanest I think that I had been this entire competition prep. And honestly, I think, you know, my entire life, the lowest body weight, just pretty much everything. Even a lot of you guys in the comments section were saying like, holy shit, this is the best you've ever looked. The leanest you've ever looked. How the hell did you get your waist so small? All those things. And essentially this is me around like 80 to 90%. So mostly into my peak week. And in addition to the overall like last few months of competition prep, some of the things that we're gonna talk about in this video, all this together is essentially what resulted in this physique. In my personal opinion, my best physique. But the way that we are going to be organizing, because there's, there's a lot to cover in this video and I wanna make it a very clear cut and easy to understand way. Right here on the left hand side, you have each of the different variables or factors, whatever you wanna call them. Right here on the top, you have each of the different seven days of the peak week. In my case, I'm covering from Sunday all the way until Saturday, the day of the show. And right here, one more column, this is going to be a star system from one to five. And I'm going to call this kind of like a significant score. Okay guys, first two variables. We are going to be talking about protein and fat. Both of these, I am actually giving a one out of five significant score because there really isn't that big of a deal. There really isn't that much to do. My recommendation is throughout your entire peak week up until your pretty much your show day, whatever you have been doing so far, just keep it going. If you know, it's kind of like that saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That pretty much applies here. The reason behind this is that a lot of people think like, you, what are you talking about? Protein and fat, macronutrients, this, you know, these things are so important for your physique. And the answer is yes in the long term, or maybe, you know, the medium term. But when it comes to your peak week, we are looking specifically on a day to day, or maybe even in some cases, hour to hour basis. And in that case, protein and fat, they really, they really don't matter that much on such a small time frame. It's kind of like, you know, kind of like that magic number, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Let's say you're consuming 200 grams, and then one day you randomly consume 100 grams, you know, way less than usual. So, What's going to happen is your physique suddenly just going to immediately evaporate. You wake up, all your muscle is gone. Or vice versa, if you eat more than usual, you wake up, you know, after consuming three, four hundred grams of protein, are you like, oh shit, I'm Ronnie Coleman suddenly? No, it doesn't work like that. Protein does not have anywhere near that fast of an impact on your body. And in that sense, when it comes down to literally the final few days before your show or photo shoot, whatever you are doing, it really doesn't matter that much at all. Just keep doing what you're doing. That's the name of the game. Okay guys, next variable, carbohydrates. This one I am giving a five out of five significant score because this is actually one of the variables which may have the most and fastest impact on um, how your body actually looks. Pretty much if you wanna break it all down and, and really oversimplify it, when it comes to carbohydrates in the final week, your overall strategy is to start very low, or what some people like to refer to as depletion, and then later into the week, this is when you start what some people call carbing up. The whole point in the beginning, um, I would recommend going as low as 50% of your normal carbohydrate intake for the first you know, three to four days. Pretty much in my case, from Sunday to Wednesday, I kept carbohydrates at 50% uh, of what they were prior to me starting my peak week. So pretty much what you were consuming during, you know, three weeks out, 
two weeks out, you know, the final few days before starting your peak week, whatever that number is, cut that in half down to 50% and that is what you are consuming. A pretty crazy but interesting example is um, Chris Elkins. He's another social media, kind of like YouTube, Instagram guy like myself. He's a bodybuilder, a, a natural pro bodybuilder actually. He actually did his first men's physique show uh, a few weeks ago and I was following his prep. He went as low as like 30, I think it was maybe 30 or as high as 50 grams of carbohydrates during this depletion stage in his uh, his peak week. And even then, the carbohydrates were pretty much exclusively coming from like broccoli and green beans, like very high fiber, low sugar uh, sources. Pretty much on Thursday, what I did is I bumped my carbohydrate intake back up to around 100 to 150% of what I was doing uh, prior to the peak week. So in my case, it went to around like anywhere from like two to 250 grams of carbohydrates. And then finally on Friday, you wanna bump it at even further, 150, maybe even 200%. I know some guys with faster metabolisms, they actually go even higher. They go as high as like 300% of their, you know, their previous normal carbohydrate intake. There are some guys out there who I've heard of literally carving up like the day before a show, going as high as five, six, 800 grams of carbs. If you're like a really skinny guy, you're kind of an ectomorph, you just like seafood and you burn it up because of your quick metabolism. Yeah, you can go pretty hard uh, on the carb uh, carb up, both in terms of magnitude and in terms of how early you start. I didn't really start till like Thursday night, Friday morning. Some guys, even by Wednesday, they have already started to boost up their carbohydrates because of their just their like their on fire metabolism. And then on Saturday or the day of whatever it is that you are doing, from the moment you wake up, ideally somewhat early, pretty much I would say every two to three hours, you probably want to consume around 50 grams of carbohydrates leading up until you actually start to pump up and go do you know, your show or whatever it is that you are doing. And one more thing I would recommend is in addition to the amount of carbohydrates you are getting, the type, you probably want to be consuming very simple, quick digesting, low physical volume carbohydrates. We're essentially talking about sugar. Uh, we are doing rice cakes, chocolate, candy, just very simple, quick, low physical volume uh, sugary foods. And a big reason behind that is uh, you want to make sure that you can get the actual carbohydrates in your body and you know allow you to get full and pumped up. But simultaneously, you don't want it to fill you up and make you bloated because it's gonna make it very difficult for you to maintain a very slim, tiny waist on stage. This is a big reason why you probably don't wanna be going for like the healthier carbs, things high in fiber. Like if you're backstage, everybody's having candy and rice cakes and chocolate. Nobody's having like sweet potatoes and fruits and vegetables. No, you've had time to do that for the other 99% of your competition prep. Now on your final day, no, it's okay. It's uh, now it's better to have a little bit of the junk food. Pretty much the whole point of this is to deplete in the beginning and then finally in the end, start carving up, replenish that glycogen to a certain extent, allowing you to remain lean because you can't get fat that fast, it's, it's too late, but at the same time, fill up a little bit so that way your muscles are lean, but simultaneously they are inflated and you can actually maintain a good pump, especially when you're you know pumping up backstage, you are vascular, you look a combination of lean and to a certain extent, big. All right guys, next variables, we've got sodium and water. I wanna tackle these together because you almost have to think of their effects as somewhat intertwined. Um, a good example of this, if you guys ever wonder why you can't drink um, ocean water, like why can't you drink salt water? I mean, we all know we can't do it, but like, but why? I mean, it's still water, who cares if it's a bit salty? The problem with this is because due to the increased salt concentration, when your body needs to excrete uh, that excess salt, in doing so, because water always follows sodium, your body is actually going to excrete more water while you urinate that excess sodium than you actually took in when you drank the water in the first place, and the overall net result is a dehydrating effect. Pretty much all you guys have to understand is that water follows sodium. So what you do in the beginning of your peak week is you ramp up the system dramatically. You go high on sodium. We're talking like 5,000 milligrams or more on a daily basis, which no is not very healthy. The recommended daily healthy intake for an adult my size is around 2,500 milligrams of sodium. So we're talking literally double that, but who cares? It's just for a few days. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to drop dead. And you also go very high on water. I'm not going to tell you specifically what to do in terms of ounces or glasses or liters of water. Pretty much the way that I like to look at it is that I would usually consume like one of these, kind of like a regular glass of water. And then during these few days, 
I switched to this. I literally went from like maybe like what, like four, 300 milliliters to over a liter of water uh, for each of my meals and every time I was just thirsty or the point is I pretty much doubled my daily water intake in addition to my daily sodium intake for these three days. Then on Wednesday, you kind of bring it back down to normal, 2,500 milligrams of sodium, relatively normal intake for an adult male. Drink for hydration, drink as if, don't even think about it, just drink like a normal human being. Then Thursday and Friday, you start to cut this. Uh, you, you start to cut this down. On Friday, I went as low as under 1,000 milligrams of sodium, which is pretty damn low. And it seems easy, but it's guys, it's it's pretty hard. Like if you look at all the foods in your fridge, you just look at all the food on a daily basis, especially when you're eating out. Everything has sodium. I realized that like one single can of Monster Energy has like 375 milligrams of sodium. So I'm like shit. This is pretty much like half my daily intake. It's, I was pretty much drinking black coffee exclusively because I can't, even, I can't even have energy drinks. And then uh, you also reduce your water intake down to like, I was pretty much going to like half a glass for each of my meals. You wanna reduce your water intake as low as you can possibly go before it becomes actually dangerous or actually, you know, literally dehydrating. You drink to quench your thirst, nothing more nothing less. And in doing so, because you kind of ramp up your water cycle, uh, your water and sodium intake down later in the week, but you did it high earlier in the week, you lose more water, you excrete more water than you were taking in, and your body weight drops, like in some cases, a solid two, three, maybe even four pounds in as little as 48 hours. This is how a lot of guys, one of the ways that a lot of guys drop water before like UFC shows or like, bodybuilding, just like all of these different, you know, like weight based uh, weight category sports. And then the last thing you do, you know, it's, it's getting kind of complicated. First you went high, then you went really low. And then now finally, the last thing you do, we're talking literally like two to three hours before actually stepping on stage, you want to bump it back up just one more time. So it's kind of like you go low, then uh, yeah. And this coupled with your higher carbohydrate intake, which I mentioned just a few minutes ago, this is going to aid in your body looking a little bit more inflated and a little bit more, more full whilst simultaneously still retaining a pretty overall lean visual appearance. I know guys, it's it's pretty complicated because like first, you know, in the beginning of the week, we go low on carbs and high in sodium. Then we go, we go low on sodium and water and high in carbs. And at the last second, we kind of go both go light. It's, it's all over the place. And yeah, it does get a little tricky. But again, follow along with this table that I'm throwing up on screen. And um, it should give you a pretty good general guideline. And again, general being the keyword, because at the end of the day, this really does to a certain extent fluctuate. Uh, from person to person, depending on their size, depending on their genetics, depending on their metabolism. The general like principles are there, but in terms of how hard or how early or how fast you do them, that you are going to kind of have to fine tune them for your individual body. Next up, creatine. This one, it, it really doesn't fucking matter. So many people freak out because one of the, the side effects of creatine is additional water retention. They think that, oh no, we just talked about how we want less water, right? Especially water in the subcutaneous tissue layer. That's what everyone's afraid of. That's the whole point of this whole sodium water thing. You wanna reduce water in the subcutaneous tissue layer between your skin and your muscles in an attempt to kind of make you look leaner or drier, as some people say. So creatine is the, the worst thing in the world because it's the exact opposite, right? No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't matter. Creatine is just gonna make additional water retention intramuscularly. It really is not going to have a visual impact on how lean or how dry you look. If you have been taking creatine like this entire time, Keep going. You don't need to stop it. You don't need to increase it. You don't need to de you just keep doing what you're doing. However, at the same time, if you haven't been taking creatine, now is probably not the time uh, to start. Just when it comes to creatine, keep doing what you are doing. And honestly, don't even worry about it. Okay, next up, continuing on with another supplement, we've got citrulline malate. I recommend consuming eight grams around 30 to 60 minutes before pumping up backstage. Uh, citrulline malate, if you guys remember, I actually talked about this in my vascularity 101 video about a year ago. Citrulline malate in the body is a direct precursor to L-arginine. L-arginine is a precursor to nitric oxide, and nitric oxide 
uh, and your body is a vasodilator, which is just a fancy scientific way of saying it makes your blood vessels bigger and wider. Essentially, it's going to increase vascularity. You know, like, you know, like all those awesome veins you get on your arms and your biceps, or if you're lean enough in weird places like your abs, chest, and quads, that it really helps you kind of look more like just a little bit leaner and a little bit more pumped up. Yeah, citrulline malate, it kind of helps with that. Now, the effects aren't crazy. Like, it's not going to make up for the fact, you know, if, if you're not lean enough, it's it's not going to really help with this. Number one thing you can do is actually get lean and put on some muscle. But besides that, other things like carving up, water, sodium, uh, and citrulline malate, all of these things can help, which is why I'm giving it a two out of five uh, in terms of the significant score. And also because it's so simple. Unlike this other stuff with water and sodium and carving up, first you go low, then you go high. You have to, you have to think about this for every meal and every hour of the day. Here, you just take one serving 30 minutes before stepping on stage and that's it nice and simple cheap easy and if you guys are interested you can get it on my protein they have it there for like cheap as hell and you get so much that it'll pretty much last you forever especially if you use my link and discount code down in the description box below to get yourself 40 percent off i got one bag a year ago and that's i'm like i'm barely halfway there because you need so little you get so much you get it once and you pretty much never have to think about it again. Okay guys, the final two variables, which are kind of weird, but they're so simple and they help. Uh, from a visual standpoint, they help a lot. Get yourself a tan and shave, uh, shave the majority of your body hair, especially when we're talking about the chest, abs, and arms. Yeah, it helps a lot. Have you guys ever seen, I would see people to kind of make fun of some of these bullshit like 60 day transformations you see in the magazines or the crappy infomercials on at like three in the morning. They would do like 60 minute transformations where they would take a guy, make him look like crap. And then in 60 minutes without losing any body fat, obviously, they would make him look like tremendously better. And it's like, oh my God, 60 day transformation, which they did in like literally less than an hour. Some of the things that they would do besides obviously changing the lighting, making it like, you know, like more down lighting, giving you some like, you know, some baby oil or whatever to make you like glistening, you know, in front of the camera. In addition, they would also shave your body hair and give you a solid 10. Doing this alone is gonna make you just immediately appear like one to 2% leaner uh, in terms of body fat. It's, it's just magic. Go to your local Walmart, get yourself like a $20 buzzer and just take 10 minutes and do, you know, some of your major areas before you hop in the shower. Or when it comes to tanning, obviously it might be a little difficult to get a, a nice natural base tan if you're anything like me and you live in Canada in the middle of November, but you can always, if you're actually doing a legit bodybuilding show, you're gonna have to get like a real official professional spray tan. But if you're not doing that, you just wanna look good for whatever purpose you have, Honestly, you can get a pretty decent tan out of just like one of these like at home products. You can I use something called Pro Tan. Uh, you can get this for like 30 or 40 bucks uh, on Amazon and you apply it. It smells kind of weird and it kind of gets messy. You just do it in the bathtub. It takes you like 20 or 30 minutes. The tan will stay on your skin and be pretty good and pretty even for a solid two or three weeks and boom. For 30 bucks and 30 minutes, you pretty much have this beautiful coat that looks like you just spent like the last two weeks in like Florida or, or Mexico or something. It, it, it looks fantastic, it's simple, and it makes a tremendous uh, improvement into the overall visual appeal of your physique. Because if you're a pale guy, when you're under harsh white light, it doesn't look that great. You can be jacked, you can be lean, but you can't actually see all the fine little details, all the definition in the muscle, which you worked so hard to build and reveal via diet. You can't see it because it's just white on white. And guys, that's it. That is my overall uh, peak week protocol prior to this 2019 competition. And uh, without spoiling too much, because again, we're gonna talk about that and actually reveal the final physique in the next video, yeah, I was pretty happy uh, as in previous years with how it turned out. It's not gonna like make or break your physique. It's not gonna make you just, oh my God, suddenly you look like you lost an additional 10 pounds. You look so much better. No, but can it improve the visual appeal of your physique a solid one, two, maybe 3%? Yeah, like this isn't regular life where you're like the most jacked guy in the gym. No, when you're on stage, everybody looks good. And those little one or 2% differences, yeah, they definitely, uh, they do go a long way. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. As always, the next video is the finale to the, 20, uh, the 2019 competition season, the season three of the Ascension. It's, uh, it's going to be, I gotta be honest guys, right now, I don't wanna spoil anything or give anything away, but 
It's going to be interesting. I've been competing since 2014. This is my sixth show that I've done. And even even then, after five years of this, there were still some some interesting developments. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to say more than that. I want to talk about it. We're going to do a full video with analysis, my opinion, breakdown. Did I do good? Did I do bad? All, all these things. It's get ready. I'm already predicting it, you know, days ahead. I know that this is, uh, this is going to be a big one, but on my channel, what else is new? And I'll see you guys, uh, see you guys then.